Hey y'all, it's Vintage Vinny. Welcome to another antique store haul. Everything we're going to be looking at today came from the same place. One of my peddler malls unfortunately closed here a few months ago. So I decided to go ahead and see if I could support them in any way, shape, or form that I could. And I think I got some pretty decent stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So this caught my eye. This is a Napco piece. It's a little boy singing to a bird. I paid five bucks for it. You can hang it on the wall or you can have it sitting on a table just like this. No cracks or chips to it. I think it would be a really cute idea for springtime. I know that's right around the corner. And I was like, yeah, definitely should pick that up. So this Peddler Mall was a place where I really had to take a lot of chances on the items I was purchasing. With it closing, a lot of the dealers did have sales, so I was able to pick up some things much cheaper than what I normally would have. Now granted, some of the prices were already good, but it was nice to get an extra discount on top of it. So this was one item. This is from the year 2000, so it's not like truly old, but I mean it's, it's, it's up there. It's 22 years old now. And again, I took a shot for $2.50, and I have it listed on eBay right now for $14.99 with best offer with the hopes that I get $10 to $12 for it. So that wasn't a too bad of a risk. So I saw on one of the shelves this bag of vintage tins. And of course, you guys can see there are some Band-Aid tins in there, and I know that some people do collect those. So I said, what the heck, let me go ahead and grab the bag. It was $8, so there are five tins in there. And there's some really neat ones. I'll go ahead and open the bag up so we can take a look at them real quick. Alrighty, so here are the tins. There were five of them in there. This one's really cool. It's a Fluger hand pack fish hooks tin. And here are the hooks that would have come in there at the time. It's empty, by the way. Just a label. I will do my research to see if these happen to have any value. And then we've got this Permatite cold patch repair kit. And I believe that this was for... I don't know what this was for. Oh, for any rubber products. Okay. So it's a quick permanent repair for any, for like inner tubes or any other product like a tire. So that's cool. If you like to decorate for Halloween um, or maybe even springtime, this would be good for spring too. The orange and the green and the white would look great for an industrial Halloween display or even for springtime. Because I think that the bright colors on here definitely give you spring vibes and Halloween vibes. Now this one I might be keeping for myself. The Doan's Pills. A mild diuretic to the kidneys. Uh, it contains theobromine, sodiosalicylate, salicylate, uva ursi, ext, Buchu and vitamin A, and you have to take three pills with a glass before each meal. Oh boy. And these were from Foster Milburn Co. in Buffalo, New York. So I think this is older. There's no uh, zip code on here whatsoever. But yeah, I really liked that. I think that's really interesting. I will probably be keeping that for my junk jar because that is just super neat. And then we've got the two Band-Aid tins. I would really like to find the one with the lady on it. Sterily guaranteed unless individual envelope is opened. Okay. These are great for your bathroom or there's so many things you can do with them. And I know that some band-aid tins are valuable. I will do my research and see. That's another cool one, don't you think? Again, it just says the same thing here. Neat, huh? So now that we have taken a look at some of the larger goods, let's go ahead and check out some of the smaller goods. So I did end up spending $8 on this 1999 Toy Story 2 Buzz Lightyear um, envelope. Yo-yo. Where did envelope come from? 
Now, it doesn't do as well as I would have hoped. I'm, I'm really, I pushed the envelope a little bit and I listed it for $20. I'm hoping that I can get that. Uh, the packaging is a little curved, as you can see. It's probably been exposed to the elements, or a lot of people have just handled it over the years. But maybe I can find the Woody one brand new and sealed, and I can list that one with it. Who knows? You just never know what's out there. I found this guy here. I thought he was super cute. He'd be great for springtime. He's just a figurine. I paid $4.99 for him. He is marked Japan on the bottom, as you can see. But look at him, he's just a happy little boy and it looks like he just harvested some, looks like potatoes maybe? So I thought he would be great for springtime. This was actually the first item that I found. This is a crumb sweeper, very deco, maybe 20s, 30s. And she was $4.97 half off of the original price. Now her hat is chipped, but I mean, that adds to its character, don't you think? I actually have another one of these that I picked up a while ago. And I'm happy to add this one to that collection, to that growing collection that I didn't need to start. But hey, why not, right? So this I've actually admired in this one person's booth for a while and she was marking stuff down really low so I had an interest in this and she went up to the register and said hey um, do 75% off of this so I only paid $1.88 and I probably will keep this it's just a heart-shaped planter I, I love the color that's definitely my favorite shade of it's like an aqua turquoisey color so I was really happy to get that for really for a really good price so I will definitely be holding on to that one. And I don't keep very many planters, but this one I think I will be keeping. Now I don't normally pick up bells because they just don't seem to sell all that well, but I've never seen a Native American bell with the TP. No markings to say who made it. It could be any of the, you know, ceramic companies, Napco, Yukago, anything like that. But again, it was $3, and I've never seen a bell like this before, so I felt that that was a little unique. I'm not sure if I'll be selling that or if I'll be keeping it. We'll see what happens. So for $4, I picked up this really awesome vintage Christmas. That's like a little promotional giveaway item for Cunningham's Lawn and Garden Equipment that was in Mercersburg, PA at one point. So that will just go with all of my vintage Christmas stuff. And basically what it is, it's, it's like one of those toys where you have to flip it up in the air and try to catch it on the hook. And it's in the shape of a wreath. So I will be keeping that for my vintage Christmas stuff. For $3.50, I got two vintage books here. I got The Little Red Hen by Whitman. And then I got this book, Chug Chug, Here Comes the Farmer, Busy Bee Tractor. It's missing the wheels that were supposed to be on it. And it's a little bit beat up, but it's still very fun. Now somebody did scribble on the front cover here, but it looks like it's pencil. And if I gently take an eraser to that, I think I can get it off without damaging the page. Or maybe I'll just leave it as is. Either way, I still like the book. Might sell that one and I might sell the Little Red Hen too. Um, as you can see, it looks like something got to it and the pages are coming out of the book itself. But they're still fun regardless. And I hate for them to be just thrown out, you know. Okay, so I have three more items, but I'm going to share with you all first my favorite finds from this trip to this Peddler Mall. So these two items are my favorite pieces from this Peddler Mall. So I believe that this is a Viking glass bowl here. Paid $8.95 for it. And I just absolutely love Viking glass green and I love their blue as well. So I saw that for the $9 and I said, what the heck, It's that's not a bad price to ask considering what I've seen people at antique stores try to charge for this stuff. So I had to have that. Now this is super, super adorable, and I will be keeping this for myself. I paid $2.99 for it. It's a Cupid planter. 
I had one in pink a while back and I decided to go ahead and sell that after I found this. And I just think he's super cute. I could use him in Valentine's Day or I could just put him with all my other cupies. I don't know what it is. I just, I, one day I found a cupie for a really good price at an antique store and the rest is history. I've just started collecting them and finding them. Some of them I have sold because I was like, eh, they were a good price, but they weren't really fitting to me. I kept the ones whose personalities I can relate to the most. Like my favorite one that I have is um, he's biting his thumb and he's giving the side eye and he looks really worried and I'm like, see, that's me when I do something wrong. Something like that. Or there's, I have a grumpy cupie. I love my grumpy cupie because he's just, he's super fun. So I didn't think those were too bad of a price to ask. I love those. All right, and the very last item I'd like to share with you all, and don't worry, I am gonna open it up so we can look at what's in here. I got a, what this person described as a jar of junk. It was $4.50, and it looks like it's filled with just a bunch of jewelry. Now, jewelry is not really like something I dive into a lot, but sometimes if I see something unique, I do like to pick it up if it's relatively inexpensive. And I do research on it to see what value it has. And if it doesn't have any value and I personally like it, I will put it in my junk jars because I like to preserve the small stuff that gets lost really easily. So let me go ahead and open this up and uh, we will take a look at all the pieces real quick. Okay, so here's a brief overview of everything. Um, I think the person was right when she said it was a junk jewelry lot. A lot of these pieces are missing their rhinestones and such and are like single earrings. Do you think that this would do well at a live sale in regards of maybe like somebody who crafts with broken jewelry? I would think so if I started the price low. Because I mean, there's some really great pieces that somebody could repurpose and you know, maybe put rhinestones in again. There's one piece that I am actually gonna keep because I think it's really cool. It's this antique phone brooch. That is just fantastic. That's probably my favorite piece out of this entire lot. Now there's not a marking on it, and it is missing one of the red rhinestones right there, but even still, it's just going in the junk jar. I don't mind that something's missing off of it. I just think that that is really unique. But yeah, there's a couple of Johnette jewelry pieces in here. I think I saw something by Trafari and uh, one piece by Sarah Coventry. But yeah, it's not really I don't really think there's anything in here that I think anybody would buy like for like one individual price because a lot of the stuff is missing off of it or you know the pins missing off of it but I'm sure there is some crafty person out there who just gets a hankering when they see a big lot of junk jewelry and they are able to do so many things with it repurpose it put it in like those jewelry trees that you see a lot of people making so I wouldn't say it's a total loss. I'm sure somebody out there is just drooling or chomping at the bit just to get a hold of this lot. Now these also are not in terrible shape. These um, like rhinestone earrings. Uh, one of them is missing the rhinestone here. I think it's on this one. But I will just go ahead and include those in the lot. So yeah, that is everything that I would like to share with you all from this antique mall that has unfortunately closed down. Let me know down below in the comment section what were your favorite items. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notified when new videos are uploaded. Be sure and check me out on Instagram, the link to it is down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye, guys.